Morning, comrade subscribers. Um, Saturday morning. It's, uh, well, I'm not going to say it's a lot cooler. Uh, what is it? About 26? <laughs> about 26 degrees. Uh, what time is it? I don't know. It's about probably about 7 a.m. It's very dark outside, so we might be getting a storm. Let's see. Um, but another little machine. Um, this is the Miko Spectrum. So it's a Domashin computer. So domestic or I guess home computer. Um, obviously I can't read the Russian. Uh, but uh, it does say something here about Mova Program Vanya Basic. <laughs> B-E-I... S I K basic about programming and basic um, SCART audio video RGB so um, this I think was built in Temopil in Ukraine and actually you can see down here um, it actually does mention I guess if I can just oh, screens in the way it does actually say down here I assume made in Ukraine uh, I'm not sure the year, I'm not sure the date, I'm, I'm thinking it's independent Ukraine, um, yeah, it'd be independent Ukraine because it'd be, say, USSR otherwise, I guess. Uh, so, yeah, post-91, um, maybe, yeah, mid, early, early to mid-90s, so I'm not going to, I'll probably keep, you yeah, know, the box is pretty, <laughs> it's pretty destroyed. So, but I'll keep the, um, I'll keep the sides, keep the sides in the front, obviously. Uh, we've got the little Miko symbol there. I don't know if I'll be able to scan that in. It's probably a bit too destroyed. Um, I don't know if there's anything else interesting I can really make out. <laughs> so, it's basically, it's a ZX Spectrum clone again. Um, there it is. So, it's a bit different to the Slavutik, which I've got here, just in comparison. So, nice metal case, membrane keyboard, kind of cheapish, it feels like a cheap case, but, you know, it's got solid keys. And you can see, actually, that it's been, it's been well used, well loved. Uh, metal, metal key, uh, keyboard layout. Well, keyboard legend. Nice, yeah, I say nice. Keys seem to be pretty good, good solid, but you know, very cheap plastic. Nothing really of interest on there. Interesting port design, um, uh, port decisions here. Let me just get the slab all tick out of the way. So yeah, I won't be able to do too much today. I could, if I wanted to kind of break it, I could try and power it up and, and get video out of it. Uh, well, I don't know what the, I don't know what the pinout is. But, uh, so these are the ports we've got. So we've got RF output for a TV. Uh, I'm not sure what that switch does. There is a switch there. But it's labeled F. I'm not sure. Uh, but we ignore that. Uh, tape. So all, all these are actually in English. So, so we've got tape input, pretty standard. This is the video. Um, so it's a two by six, so it's 12 pins. I think it's, a, it's an RG type connector. Uh, so I need to do some research on that. Um, obviously, it's weird that they've gone for one of these instead of just a DIN. I don't know why they've done that. No, okay, this is all I got this in the box so I don't have these cables so I'm gonna to have to um, luckily uh, I've got some nice uh, contacts in Ukraine who um, have promised to get them for me so um, it's gonna take a little bit of time but yeah I should be able to have the proper connector and make a proper cable for this rather than just um, you know pulling it out putting a din in um, so we've got Kempston joystick and then we've got an S1 S2 so I guess that's Sinclair one and two joysticks and then we've got the five volt input here 
So another, it's, it's another RG uh, type connector. This is a two by two, so four pins in total. Uh, at least it's not overkill like the seven pins on the um, on the Slavutik. Slavutik. Um, here it's labeled D D O D D D D. So I'm not sure what that is at the moment. There is actually someone someone's found that someone in Ukraine is actually selling a manual for this. Um, I couldn't find one online, so if I can get my hands on it, then I'll scan it and upload it. Uh, and then obviously we've got a reset there. So yeah, so this is this ZX Spectrum clone with difficult ports. So, but we can still open it up. Let's have a look at what's inside. Missing screw, so it has been opened. There's no security snot. We've got two Phillips heads. Phillips head, Phillips head, up. Ah. Flathead, 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 Phillips, <laughs> missing. So it could be that this doesn't work, but um, let me open it up. Okay. Those screws are out. The, the dodgy Phillips that they found from somewhere. So yeah, obviously it's probably been gone into because of, it's been well used. Oh well, let's see if we pull this up. Okay, how's it connected? Cool. Okay. It's interesting, okay. What is that pressing into then? So if we have a look at the, the keyboard, that's interesting. <laughs> oh, okay, I guess, well, we can pull it apart, but I guess what they've got is, they've got that, they've got a spring, and then they've got contact either side, and the contact is making contact. That's how it's working there. Um, let's see, what have we got here? Kind of got two kind of interfaces here. <laughs> Internal interfaces, yeah, so there is no external um, ZX bus or whatever. We've got it internal here. A KR, oh, okay, so yeah, 93, 93, so that's, they look like they're the ROMs. That, okay, <laughs> I just love this. There we go, you can't see it, there we go. So that's, I guess, Supposed to go there, 2200 microfarads. Maybe that's going there. That's the reset button there. So it's all Soviet, Soviet era parts. Okay, uh, so I'm not familiar with this one. Is this the Z80? Z80 clone, KR1858VM1. I'll um, obviously I'll put that in the. I'll either put it in the video description or I'll put it in um, along the bottom. Got some cool parts. All right, let's have a let's have a closer look. Okay, so that's maybe Z80. I don't know. I'm not. It's been a while. I'll check that. I'm guessing they're the ROMs to 8K ROMs. Um, keyboard interface, nice big juicy electrolytic. So it looks like this, whatever this port is, is similar to this RG over here. So I'll we'll see the modulator box, the inputs. Um, Looks like this is the RAM here, KR565. Yeah, so it looks like this is all the RAM, 64 kilobit RAM. Nice big juicy <laughs> capacitors. Um, not sure what else of interest is on here. Is that the crystal there, is it? No. Not sure. Oh no, I'm not sure what that is. 
So what do we got? 92 dates, 90. What's the latest date? I'm not sure what that is. There might be some ULA type devices here as well. Was it 92? So I say this is um, a year or two younger. There's a 93. Oh no, not 93. So 9310. So that's actually older than any of the um, chips in the other. In the Slavutik. Slavutik. Anyway, there we go. Um, so not much I can do unless I wanted to. So I could, you know, for example, replace this with a 2.1 mil. Uh, DC socket it's the only the two so I could power it up video I say unless it's labeled on the board um, I have no idea what the 12 cables are for so yeah there we go we can have a quick look I don't know if you want to have a quick look at the keyboard we can pull that apart um, yeah we'll have a quick look at the keyboard okay. I'm gonna lose what have we got here? Okay. Here we go. Oh something oh no, that's oh, it's just screws, just screws. So there's the keyboard. So it looks like um okay, the first one first time I've seen something like this. So it looks like they've they've put it in, and then they've kind of um, kind of soldered or not soldered, but basically you know um, melted it so that it won't come out again. So I better be pretty careful. <laughs> so um, have a closer look. There we go. So yeah, like I said, like I suspected. So we've got a spring there, and then we just push down and we make contact. So, interesting, pretty simple, does the job I guess, um, just got to make sure everything's lined up if I want to get it back in. Alright, that was it, it's a pretty quick one, um, I say when I get the plugs uh, and figure out the, the pin out then um, we'll see if it works, um, don't know, don't know, let's see, okay. Bye for now.